I remain with the EM1 and the 12 to 50 lens, the kit lens that came with the EM5, which has served me well for many years. Although a variable aperture zoom losing two whole stops between wide angle and telephoto, with these restrictions in mind, it is not difficult for the experienced photographer to work around these problems in landscape photography. Much of my work at this time was in Greater London for my online book London's Countryside, still available from Blurb. Much of the Greater London County extends into the North Downs and Essex countryside, where I start my tour. When I worked in London during the 1960s and 70s, seemingly far away places like Hainaut and Fairlop at the Essex end of the Central Line fascinated me. I never had time for a visit, but now, self-employed with a book project about London's countryside, it gave me the incentive to take a look, and I was pleasantly surprised. At Hainaut Forest, I could have been deep in a forest, yet only a few miles from central London, and away from the noise of heavy traffic. Shooting into the light, I spot meter near a highlight, emphasising spring leaf, correcting any underexposed shadows in post-production. Having travelled out on the central line, I was soon swiftly transported back to Perivel in the west, and a much more sedate form of travel on the Grand Union Canal. But we'll leave that, because evening is now fast approaching, and I really wanted to ascend nearby Hossenden Hill for that view back to the city. The weather was perfect. Public footpaths crossed the hill near a golf course, and these players made the perfect addition to the grand view back to London. I returned to the Grand Union Canal, the evening light now adding a touch of romance to the scene, a canal boat passing at the right moment. A diagonal view strengthens the composition, but I don't think that I had much choice, and neither did I wish to test the weather seals on my EM-1. Beacon Hill was one of several airports south of the capital that protected London from enemy action during World War II. At times it is still noisy, mostly used by private planes, but a short walk away from the airport soon brings us to a country scene that the London borough of Bromley is renowned for, but hardly known. Not far away, and still on the North Downs, but now in Surrey, is St. Leonard's Church at Chelsham, a remote landscape not far from the metropolis, mostly the haunt of keen walkers. See how I frame the church with foliage. A similar secret landscape is found at Totheridge, an agricultural area sandwiched between Finchley and Barnet. Again, I have framed the church, but this time with the Lichgate. After completing photography for the book, I took leave in Suffolk, staying for a few days in Southwold, halfway up the East Anglian coast facing the North Sea. Rough seas are eroding this delicate coast, and during my visit I experienced all manner of weather. I could see the storm coming, so I sought refuge on the pier, and was lucky enough to get a dramatic shot. As usual, I spot me to the sea, but to add drama, I have allowed the advancing cloud to remain underexposed, without correction, in post-production. This is the beauty of saving to raw, and adjusting in post-production when required. I never like tying my hands when taking a shot. Quick changes in weather can also bring about the promise of a sunset, so, after dinner, and full of hope, I strolled out to the River Blyes and wasn't disappointed. Spot metering essential for this type of shot to maintain strong colours over a shadowy landscape. I still have the 12 to 50 lens. The 12 to 100, which I love very much, came later. It is much lighter and, in my opinion, better optically than often made out. 
Unfortunately, it is no longer in production, but worth picking up second-hand. But I am not selling mine. Sorry.